water just started just to rise. I've never seen it rise that quickly before. The strangest part is, is if you can take a line from Corpus Christi up through Houston, around up to old, the Liberty County area, all the way across Louisiana was underwater. Normally we have a storm come in and it just passes right through within 24 hours and this one just wouldn't move. It just got on top of us and stayed. It wouldn't stop raining. Wouldn't stop raining at all. The biggest issue was communication. Power down, communication is down, everything down. No traffic can move. Emergency response can't get in. Uh, we couldn't get uh, support into the place. We had people flooded in their homes, caught, trapped, needed out, and the emergency services couldn't get to them. I've never seen devastation from a hurricane, never been through one. It was, it was just the, the sights when you go downtown and you see a sign with eight, 10 inch I-beam posts, two of them bent over, twisted. I mean, just how, how can that be done? Today, it's peaceful. The Gulf of Mexico, a beautiful gift to our nation's coastline that in August fed the rage of Hurricane Harvey, the wettest tropical hurricane to ever hit the United States. 130 mile an hour winds, 40 to 52 inches of rain, 82 deaths, almost unimaginable devastation. This is a Texas story, and because many of us call Texas home, it's our story too. As Hurricane Harvey bore down on the Lone Star State, the pictures you're seeing are not from a television network or national news service. They're taken by our own members and friends who lived a nightmare as cruel as it was random. Some areas escaped with a glancing blow. Elsewhere, entire neighborhoods wiped out. This is not so much an ETV story on electricity and power as it is on community and pulling together. The mine begs to glaze over the damage, but each of the countless piles of debris, now stacked in front yards, represents a family, a way of life, starting over. I told my daughter when the, the water touched the, the tire to, tell, to let us know for us to start moving out of, of the neighborhood from the house. So he didn't give us too much chance to, to move things out, so I was putting everything high for water not to touch it. By the time we came back, the water was too high. Got one light from my sister in her bedroom and told her, hey, call up my buddy, see if he's got water. I'm gonna go help these people. I'll be right back, start picking things up. The water was just starting to come in my house. Him and his parents turned into him and his parents, the married couple with the one-year-old, and then a whole nother family from down here. So three hours later when I came back, water was already waist deep in the house, so I wasn't able to pick up anything. As we saw the water rise crossing the road right down here, we realized that it's probably going to keep going. And actually my son and I sat on the front porch over there and watched it get into our front yard. And uh, we realized that it's probably time to leave. I ran the ran rescues for three hours, got my sister and my dog, dropped them at my buddy's house because he was high and dry. And I turned around and just came back out because I had other friends and elderly people that I knew that needed help. I mean, my stuff was already a loss, so I'm not going to sit there at a friend's house and not do anything. We had six foot of uh, water inside the house, and I just felt that all my, my effort, all my work, my hard work that I've been doing is, is gone, and to start over again. Starting over again is now a reality for thousands of residents, businesses, and industries for hundreds of miles along the Texas coast. While fierce winds took its toll in some areas, it was the unrelenting rain and the floods that followed that caused most of the widespread damage. We knew from the news for Houston specifically that we had flooding in downtown some areas. We knew there was a huge residential disaster 
Now, how much of a commercial? There was some flooding in some of the industrial plants, and we were starting to dispatch for some of that already. Very coordinated effort as far as, you know, employers reaching out to my office saying, you know, what can we do? Is there areas that you know about? Uh, and vice versa. Uh, needing manpower maybe in a particular location. We had the three major hospitals covered just in case any type of catastrophes, generators not starting, um, things like this. That way we can get in, make sure all the patients were taken care of, and critical care systems were up and running. As the NECA IBEW Powering America team switched from the survival to the restoration mode, it became clear that in today's world, the requirements for life are food, shelter, water, and electricity. Because basically everything in the storm's path needed a rebuild that begins with electricity. From work as complex as gutting and reinstalling large power systems, to rewiring block after block of single family homes, it's all electrical work and it's all necessary before things can truly get back to normal. And for everyone concerned, that can't happen soon enough. 10, 12, 14 hour days, you know, Monday through Sunday. Um, it's just whatever it takes right now to get everybody going again, you know. Sacrificing a lot of time, you know, from our families and stuff, but it makes me feel a whole lot better after we're getting everything going and stuff, so. But most people work in 7 to right now or more. Now, I've been working 15, 16 hour days trying to get you know, people inspected and, and their homes back to where they, they need to be. You see a lot of different faces every day, everybody pitching in, doing what they can, you know, to help out and put the city back together. This house, we probably have another two to three days on it and then, uh, you know, on, on to the next one. Just to see you know, neighborhood after neighborhood, house after house, and the amount of damage that a natural disaster can do, it, it, it hits home. Everyone's working seven days a week, 12 to 16 hour days, helping with the rebuild. A bunch of my members are volunteering, helping each other, uh, helping the surrounding community uh, where they can, when they can, uh, and that's where we're at right now. One such volunteer effort is happening at the home of Diana Salinas. Well, the guys that are inside my house, they're from the union. I appreciate their help because we had to do the whole wiring from the house and they're doing it just uh, for helping me out. I'm, I'm so blessed because they came and helped me out to do all this remodeling with my house because all the wires were making piece of parts. I'm sitting home, I'm kind of feeling guilty watching the news, seeing my other Texan brothers out there just neck deep in water. Uh, we wanted to do something, you know, and the best way to do is jump in and help out somebody that's in need. And that's, that's what we've been doing the last, since the hurricane stopped. You know, for me, work is work. Uh, whether we get paid for it or not, you know, we take pride in what we do. And uh, maybe a little bit more pride uh, because we're doing something good for our community and for our neighbors. Uh, so just being here and helping out whenever I can is, you know, is part of life and uh, something I enjoy doing. But to me, that's what it's all about. Uh, you don't have Certainly. time to think about some of the other things besides your, your relationships and your partnerships that you have. That's what helps us, IBW and NECA, help others. You know, every, everybody knows someone, either personally or their family or friends, lost everything. While the headlines and news cycles move on to other stories, one of them being Hurricane Irma just days later in Florida, the effects of Harvey will remain for the people in its path. But with each passing day, with each good deed and pat on the back, life will get a little bit easier along the Gulf Coast. Well, I can't change it. I just gotta keep moving forward day by day. My wife and I have talked about it. We're calling it a do-over. We get to redo the house from six foot down, and you know, it's. Uh, and as I drove around this neighborhood yesterday, everybody's going to have a do-over. It makes me feel really great to be part of the IBEW to actually get out there and help these people. You know, when you come into a home and you can help them and give them, you know, kind of a a positive feeling out of all of this, 
uh, it feels good, you know? It feels like I'm in the right profession. Well, we've had phone calls from some of those, that our members that are working out of town that, that are calling to want to know if they need to come back because they're willing to come back. So it's gonna be okay, we're, we're, we're doing well. While Jimmy Burke has a life-changing event on his hands, he remains as focused as possible on the brothers and sisters of his local and the task at hand. I'm completely proud of them, every single one of them. Uh, they're all doing, we've been through this before to some degree or another. Maybe it wasn't me that it, it, it happened like it did this time, but they all know we've got to get a job done. We're supposed to do it. We made a decision to become electricians, and that's what we're doing. For Electric TV, I'm Dominic Geritano. Follow us on social media for behind-the-scenes extras and industry information.